I think this project is gonna turn out really well. I just kind of freaked it up the first time. So I'm going to include this montage of me freaking unpicking my work. Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Struggle Network. My name is Alex Zunt, and I will be your host today. So as many of you probably know by now, here at The Struggle Network, we are not good at DIY, but we are enthusiastic. So today we're gonna be working on a really fun project that I've been kind of wanting to try out. I got into sewing around June of this year, so June of 2020. I'm still definitely a novice, but I have been doing some thrift flips with my time. This shirt actually was a shirt that I thrift flipped. So for those of you who are not familiar, a thrift flip is, kind of, is a kind of video that's become very popular on YouTube. Basically the idea is you find something that's already in your wardrobe or you go to the thrift store for it. Obviously I would prefer pulling something that already exists in my wardrobe because I don't really believe that going to the thrift store is necessarily the most sustainable thing. Obviously thrifting is more sustainable than buying something new, but I don't know, I already have a, a lot of clothing. So, and I'm sure that many people have a lot of clothing in their wardrobe that they don't necessarily wear all the time also. So this is a really good way to take something that you already own and kind of just give it a little bit of a refresher, make it something that you actually want to wear and something that you actually reach for. And also something that I really love about thrift flipping is that it takes something that you already own and you put so much time and energy into making it into this new piece that it becomes really special to you and very important to you and you want to wear it because you want to show it off. So while this shirt, this was actually a shirt um, that Taryn had that he never wore, I took it and I made it into this cute little this cute little pleated top and I wear this shirt all the time. So um, that's a really great example of ways that thrift flipping can really just like revitalize your wardrobe pieces that you already have. So today I'm going to be working with these gorgeous uh, Levi's that I picked up at a thrift store in Los Angeles probably two years ago now, which is crazy to say that it's been two years since I was living there. So these are really awesome. I love this like super true blue wash on them. These are a um, Levi's Classic Rise boot cut demi curve in a size 8. So I did wear these back in the day. Honestly they were a little bit small when I picked them up but I was able to make it work for a while and I've just decided that you know especially with COVID and everything I'm super over wearing clothes that aren't comfortable. So I don't really wear these guys anymore and I figured they would be a really good way for me to flip them into something that's a little bit more trendy and then I'm probably going to sell them on Depop so please look out for these. Um, these are kind of just like a boot cut as I said, a little bit of flare jean which isn't really my style but I think it's becoming really more popularized. I think boot cut flare jeans and wide leg pants are just really coming back um, into style. So I hope that these will turn out really cool. My plan for them is kind of something similar to like this style that I'm gonna put up on the screen over here. Um, so we're gonna take out the center panels um, of the knee, where like the knee area is roughly, and then we'll flip those panels inside out and then sew them wrong sides together so that that seam is exposed on the outside and we get a little bit of a fraying effect and I think it will look really cool. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so you're gonna take your jeans and you're just gonna lay them out on your table and then take your measuring tape and measure roughly how far down from the crotch you want this patch to be in. I measured about nine inches and then measured it with some chalk. Then I wanna take the measuring tape and measure an additional nine inches from that point and that will be the length of the patch. Take your chalk and measure both of those marks on the opposite leg. Obviously I did a very bad job of showing you what I'm doing, so I'll just explain it. You wanna cut off the bottom of one of your legs where you made that mark and then take that piece you just cut and transfer it over to the other leg so you get two nice even cuts. Then cut off the top of the patch again where you made the mark, take that piece, measure it out on the other leg, and cut. Now you should have five even pieces. So I actually messed this part up, so make sure you're doing what I'm saying and not what I'm doing. So what you need to do for this project is actually pin and sew your garment right sides together, wrong sides together. Now usually when you're sewing you want to pin right sides together because you want your seam to be hidden on the inside of your garment, but for this one we want the frayed edge on the outside, so you're going to pin it wrong sides together, aka the two sides that you don't want shown to the world, you want to pin together and sew like that. I did that wrong and I'm about to realize that I made that mistake.
In every YouTube video about sewing, I feel like the person creating the video spends at least 10 minutes talking about seam ripping. If you're not seam ripping, you're doing something wrong. And by doing something wrong, I mean you're doing something right. And that's just not allowed here on YouTube, and definitely not on the Struggle Network. So here I am, unpicking that seam that I just made, and then I'm just gonna do it again, okay? You know what I mean? We just gotta learn from our mistakes. Okay, seriously this time, you're gonna pin your material wrong sides together. Wrong sides together, okay everyone? Wrong sides together. Match up your seams, take some pins, pin it all together. You can do it. Once that's all set, take it over to your sewing machine and go ahead and sew that seam together. Always making sure to backstitch so your seams don't come undone. When you finally experience that sweet, sweet feeling of success, you're gonna match that exact process that you just did on the other leg. So you have both of those legs done and you're gonna take your weird long leg tube and attach it back to your pants by doing the exact same process. So turn the bottom part of your leg inside out and stuff it up inside the crotch part of your leg. Don't show the camera though, because that would be good YouTubing and that's not what we do here on this channel. Pin that all together and then go over to your sewing machine and sew them together, honey, in the exact same fashion. I'm just using a straight stitch here. Um, realistically, the best thing to do, and I will probably go over it again, is to do two straight stitches right next to each other to make sure that that, that seam is really nice and reinforced. And with that, your project is done. So it's time to show them off. As I said earlier in the video, these pants don't really fit me that well. So I had Taryn model them for you. And isn't he doing such a wonderful job? My goodness, he really should look into a modeling career because I think he's doing an awesome job. Look at the way that he moves. Wow, I'm a lucky girl. Okay, so I think that one came out really fun and I'm very excited about the results. So I'm actually gonna move into the second thrift flip of this video. So I have this just sort of plain Van Heusen. Yeah, it's a Van Heusen top. It's kind of this very like subtle texture on it. You can kind of see it's like a knit fabric. So I'm thinking for this top, I'll show you how it looks on so you can get an idea of how it's gonna look on me as just a plain, plain old t-shirt. Um, so I think for this video, I'm going to definitely crop it, definitely take up the sleeves, and then also do sort of a keyhole opening at the back with a tie. So um, yeah, let's get into that one. Okay, so you're gonna lay this shirt out on the table. When I tried it on, I marked roughly where I wanted the crop to be. So I'm marking that with a pin, and then I'm gonna take my scissors after I've laid it out nice and even and make sure that the back is even with the front because I've been burned before. I'm gonna take my scissors and start cutting. Once you cut to about the halfway point, you're gonna take the piece that you just cut and flip it over so you get a nice symmetrical cut on both sides. When I tried it on before, I also marked roughly where on the sleeve I wanted the cut to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with a pin and then cut just, uh, just a little bit past that so I have enough extra material to do a roll time on these. Take that piece you just cut off and put it down on the other sleeve and cut along that line. Again, you wanna have two nice even cuts. The last cut we're gonna make is we're gonna lay this out so that the back is doubled over on itself and then we're gonna make like a weird uh, half oval circle cut. I don't know, geometry was never really my thing. Anyway, you have this big open cut at the back. Cool, makes sense, got it. Now bring it over to the machine and start to hem it, but then realize that you have no idea how your machine will react to this material. So do some test strips. Believe me, it's a good idea.
my first test trip turned out terribly and I tried to show you, but I did a really bad job. But believe me, it was really bad. So you're just gonna spend some time trying to get the tension right on your machine. It's gonna be really frustrating and you're gonna be angry, but eventually you're gonna get it. And then it's time to bring your shirt back over to the machine and do just a nice easy rolled hem on the sleeves. A rolled hem is when you fold it over once, fold it over again, and then you sew it down. It's a little complicated at first, and I would definitely recommend pinning if it's your first time doing a rolled hem, but since I have had a little bit of experience, I just kind of go for it. Go ahead and repeat that rolled hem on the other sleeve, and you're going to be left with two very adorable little cap sleeves. Next, you're going to want to do a rolled hem all the way around the bottom of this shirt. Reminder that there's a big hole in the back, so it's not going all the way around the shirt, but just from one end all the way over to the other. So for the part of the shirt that really makes it stand out, we're gonna do this keyhole cutout in the back and, and insert a tie. So I'm using some bias tape for this, which is one of my favorite things to use in sewing. I think it makes all of your hems look really nice and neat and professional. So to use my bias tape, I'm just gonna unfold it and then pin it to the outside of the fabric. Once I get it all the way around, I'm gonna cut it to size and then I'm gonna take it over to my sheen and sew it down. Once that is all sewed down, you're going to take it and flip that bias tape all the way on the inside. So you're gonna flip it all the way around and pin it on the inside. Normally when using bias tape, you wanna create a nice skinny little hem, but for this, I'm gonna have the bias tape a little bit more unfurled so that we have a channel to thread our rope through. Once that's all pinned, you're gonna go ahead and bring it back to the machine and sew it down, taking care to make sure you're all the way on the outside of the bias tape so you have a nice big channel to run a cord through. Now that that's all sewed down and looking professional, I'm gonna take this shoelace that I found at the bottom of my sewing box and just thread it through. Normally I would use a safety pin for this, but the aglet at the end of the shoelace gives me something really nice and concrete to hang on to while I'm trying to pull it through the hole. Take that, tie it together, and we got ourselves a shirt, honey. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I think the cap sleeves are so cute and I love how soft it is. If you like this shirt too, I would definitely recommend trying to make it, especially because everyone has extra t-shirts in their wardrobe. But if you don't have a sewing machine, I would just recommend you um, buying this one on my Depop. Anyway, I didn't feel like recording an outro. So here's me and Gretel dancing. Gretel thinks that you should like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Subscribe.